All right, touch designer programmers. Here we are at the end. We're in our last, we're in our final stretch here. Thinking about a few things and uh, how we might kind of get there. The last place we left off was, how can we take something like this, this really cool technique that we've uh, dug into, and how can I think about adding some color on top of this? That is, that's really where uh, it would, uh, things would start to really jam and just be pretty fly. So what can we do to kind of get there? Um, and don't worry, that's what we are going to answer here in this final installment. So let's go ahead and take a look um, here inside of this base top to geo with normals and color. And we're gonna go ahead and use some of the same ideas that we've already kind of thought about a little bit, right? Lucky for us. Let's go ahead and actually borrow a few things that we've already made. Uh, we're gonna borrow, let's actually borrow the entire contents of, uh, actually let's borrow the entire contents of this one, our base top to geo with normals proper pixel, uh, proper pixel stage. We're gonna use that as the starting point for what we're gonna do here. We're gonna throw away a bit, but this is actually a good chunk to get us started with what we need to do. Okay. So let's add another movie file in top here. And we're gonna go ahead and use our trusty banana. And we're going to use a, a fit top. And for right now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that I've got um, a, I wanna make sure that I'm using dimensions that are consistent. So my grid square, my displacement square, um, I wanna make sure that my color map is square. You know, it's, it's much easier if we can um, kind of think in aspect ratios that are uniform because that's a, a great way for us to kind of sort out a challenge before we can move into some much harder things. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to a null. And before we get too much further, I'm going to call this null color, null underscore color. We'll move this over here. Now, we're gonna hold on to a bunch of this stuff that we've already done because we're gonna use it as reference, but to get started, we're gonna use our fong here. We're gonna drag our banana on here. We're gonna apply it as our color map. And now when we output our shader, just like that trick we learned with our normals, you know, figuring out our um, normal recalculation and displacement, um, we get a whole set of uh, dats, right? We get a vertex shader and we get our pixel shader set up so that it's already ready already to receive a color map. Okay, so that's, you know, we're gonna use that. This puppy right here, we can go ahead and get rid of. We'll move this right on up. Excellent, we're gonna get rid of this bong here because we don't actually need it. Oh, and you know what? Baller dash. This has a bump map in it. Let's get rid of that. Let's do this one more time. Let's output our shader from this. So otherwise we're gonna have a few extra bits that we don't need in there. And we'll nerf that and move things around one more time. Okay, doke. So now what we have is we've output uh, the vertex shader and the pixel shader, the fragment shader, <clears throat> for just using a color map. So if we went ahead and applied this as a material, we should see, boop, just our banana. And you know what, in fact, let's, swap over to something um, like one of these calibration grids instead because that's a little bit more straightforward for the moment and, and fills our whole texture. Okie doke. There we go. Great. Wonderful. Bing. Bada bing. Bada boom. And we're going to turn off any transformations in this business and we're going to make sure that it faces in a way that we can actually see it. You know, all these such a nitpicker. I want the whole world here, evidently. Okay, and our light, we're gonna go ahead and put that at zero, zero, and five. Great, okay. That, if we viewed that, that looks about like what we'd expect. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Now, we've, um, we've got a few things we've already learned how to do, so that's slick. Uh, we need to go ahead and set up this material to have a few of those other elements that we need. So let's take a look at our samplers. We know that we need this disp text, right? Our, um, our displacement texture. 
disp text. We're going to go ahead and grab our displacement texture and bring it right on over here. Slick. We know that we're going to have a disp scale. I think that's what we called it. Let's double check here. Yep, great. We could even help ourselves out 0 0.45. We could change that value out the gate. And now we need to do some of the same things that we did before, right? So let's go ahead and hit Control E to edit. We know that we're going to need to add a few things. And in fact, you know, we could probably do, um, since we've already learned some of this, well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's just view it. We're going to take a look at it. And we're going to make ourselves write it all over again. Because sometimes practice sure does help. So uh, let's start by add tangents. We know those are already pre-calculated for us. So it's index 4 t Lovely. Uh, we're also going to add some uniforms. So our uniforms go here. And we've got a uniform sampler 2D that's called disp text. It's in displacement texture. We also have a uniform that's a float. That's our disp scale. C -A -L -E. Lovely. All right, no errors so far. Um, we, you know, paying close attention here, we can remember that we did a thing where, oh, look, this is actually the, is this the right one? Yeah, this is the right one. Um, we can remember that we also had to change our struct, right? So we added a mat three, that's our TBN, right? Now you'll notice that text chord zero here is already set up for us. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Text chord zero is gonna go ahead and come in, uh, thankfully for us, um, right out of our color map that we've, we've put in here. So you know we'll go ahead and rely on that for the moment to be a really handy piece of something that we can uh, rely on as already being in here. And we should probably see that our vvert We should see color, world space, camera index. There it is. There's our uh, text chord zero ST, right? There's our text chords. So they're already in there. Slick. Um, all right, we're, we'll get to that in just one moment. So the other thing we gotta do in here, we need a back four. Actually, in this case, um, we can do just a float for our displacement. We're gonna use our texture method, our disp, Texture is going to go in here. Our UVs zero. ST are going to act as our lookup. We're going to use the R channel. We're going to multiply that by our disp scale, and then we're going to make a vec three. That's our new point position. That's going to be n times disp plus p and semicolon, we need to make sure that we use our new P here. All right, we're gonna hit Control S. Everything is gonna break. Wah, what do we do? What do we do? What have we done? Why? Uh, everything's fine. Just remember that part of what we gotta do here is we need to make sure that our struct matches here in our fragment shader. So in the fragment, we gotta go ahead and add that back in. And now we're out of the woods here for just a moment. Now, things aren't looking too exciting yet. That's okay. If we take a look at our geometry though, we can see that we're getting some displacement there. So, let's go ahead and turn up the displacement scale. Whoa, we're getting the whole kit and caboodle. Aha, uh -huh, what did we do? Let's take a closer look at what we just wrote here in our vertex shader. Um, aha, it's because we need alpha. The A channel is actually what we're after. Okay, whew, heavens to Murgatroyd. What would we have done? Okay, so this is pretty good. We can see that our normals still aren't fixed here yet. But that's, that's okay. We could probably we can get there. We can make that work. We can remember that if we go ahead and take a look 
But what happened here in this other little bit that we wrote, we have a few good bits that we can reuse. So let's open up our pixel shader and let's take a look at what we need to do to make all that stuff work. So remember our little code's right here. So there's not too much of it. Thankfully, we have a pretty easy job in front of us. We're gonna have to replace this normal. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, our code goes here. And this is for our normal recalculation. Okay. And in this bit, let's go ahead and get ourselves going. So we've got a vec3, excuse me. We've got a vec3 that's our, our normal, norm, our norm map. Great, and we're gonna use this texture method. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, actually we're gonna need to add a uniform here, right? We're gonna need to add a uniform sampler 2D, this text. We're gonna use that, disp text. We're gonna add our vvert text chord zero. We're gonna go ahead and text chord zero. Dot uv, let's make sure. Oh, it looks like that is in fact just a vec2 already. So shouldn't need to do any more than that. Let's see what we might have messed up here real fast. Ah, a cast from a VEC2 to a VEC3. Aha, so let's do RGB in our normal map because that's actually what we're after. We don't want all those, all that business. Uh, we're gonna forget about A for a second. We just need RGB. Great, so then we're gonna have a VEC3 that we call norm and this VEC3 is gonna be 2.0 Right, two times our normal map minus 0 0.5. Excellent. Then we're going to have our norm. It's going to be equal to our vvert tbn times our normal, our norm, excuse me. And then finally, we're going to have a vec3. That's our normal. And this is going to normalize norm. And then we need to make sure that we take out this other declaration. Okie dokesy. And, huh, all right, looks pretty good. Or, or does it? What's going on? Where's our light? Because we're close, but something went Awry. Okay, let's take another look here at what we've got. Beaver TBN times our norm. Ah, aha. Aha, so we did this lovely thing, but you know what we never passed over is we never actually set up our TBN over here in our vertex shader. So, silly us, that was foolish. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's uh, bring this back up. Let's um, make sure that we've got that set up. And uh, let's bring back, here we go. Okay, so uh, we actually, we've got to do a few more things here in vertex land, excuse me. We need to calculate, cal calculate our bitangent. Um, and we can do that, right? So VEC3, uh, BTAN, this will be the cross product of n and t x y z again times t w and then down here vvert t b n and actually let's do this just gonna do return return and no reason To waste clicks. All right. Oh, bother. There we go. V or TBN, and I can change these in just one second. Excellent. And all of this is going to have a semicolon at the end. Okay. So we've got one, zero, one, and two. 
and 0 is going to go ahead and be our tangent, x, y, z. 1 is going to be our b tan. And then finally, n goes in there. All right. <laughs> that looks more like it. Yeesh. Okie dokie. All right, so now what we've managed to do is now we've got a color map that's applied to our geometry, as well as a displacement map that's describing a bunch of things here, and we've got some normals going on with all this. Now, you know, in this particular uh, procedure, this approach, right, we could still convert, we could still change this to being particles if we so felt, right? So that's, that is still a fine way for us to move. And we've got this like beautiful particle goodness. Um, that's pretty slick. We can do that. Uh, if we're going to do that, though, we should also remember um, that here in our displacement texture, probably what we want to do is we want to go to mirror for our UVs instead of repeat. Uh, and this is going to be, this is a great technique, right? If we, am I on my geo? Yeah, great. Um, we can move that closer to our camera. We could turn that, you know, rotate that on an axis. This has got a lot of kind of gooey, fun potential associated with it. And part of what's fun here is we've separated out our color map from our displacement map. So we've got two things going on here. We can kind of displace something and we can color it. So we have multiple options that we can kind of pursue there. Um, we don't have to convert it, of course, if we don't want to. And if we don't convert it and we kind of leave this as is, we also end up with something that's got a nice set of normals that are attached to it. So if we rotate this, oops, rotate it, not translate it, uh, we still get that like beautiful shading um, from our lighting source uh, that we're after. And of course, you know, you've got to play with some of that a little bit to kind of dial in exactly what you want that to look like. Um, but we still have some normals that are calculated here, which is, is pretty slick um, and is really very handy um, depending on the kind of effect that you're after, right? And depending on where your light is, if it's a cone light or if it's point light, there's, there's kind of lots of fun stuff that we can do there. Now, you don't have to be stopped by um, this particular approach. You could use both the, um, you, you could use your texture that's your color map to also be your displacement map. If you, you know, wanted to, that has a really slick, fun kind of look to it. I like that an awful lot. Um, and it gives you these beautiful kind of point cloud representations. And a lot of this really comes down to what you're interested in doing. At this point, uh, kind of the world's your oyster and the exploration you want to uh, encounter or explore is yours to create right this is a combination of both of those things you can play to your heart's content at this point so hopefully that gives you at least a few ideas about how you can start to use vertex shading um or excuse me uh vertex shaders and uh, fragment shaders in conjunction with your work here inside of touch, especially work that's driven by noise operations. It's like, this is where it's at for me. It gets real exciting, real fun. And hopefully uh, this is a place that all of you can explore and interrogate and kind of dig in a little bit deeper with as well. Happy programming, everybody. And I'm sure there will be more soon.